Hello and welcome to the Film Story Recap Channel. Ten years after the end of the world, the zombies are evolving in a different direction. If you are being chased by this zombie in front of you, you're in luck, because he's the dumbest zombie in the world. He saw a statue on the side. He didn't even think about it and bit down. The result is that the tongue is stuck tightly to the top. A silly zombie like this can be easily killed, even by an older woman. But if there are stupid zombies, there must be smart ones. This zombie has an IQ of 250. Don't think you can hide in an iris scan chamber and rest easy. The zombie bit off the researcher's eye and then used his iris to open the metal door. The last type is the most vicious and the most powerful. They not only have a high IQ and their speed is also very agile. You don't have to run when you encounter this kind of zombie because there is almost no possibility of survival. And the human side after a long post-apocalyptic experience, the existence of the zombie has been accustomed to. All kinds of methods to kill zombies are endless. This person directly transformed into Lady Liberty. Easy to solve the zombie attacked. And this man driving a harvester is a bit sick. He drove the harvester and followed the zombie without any hassle. Finally, the zombie was made into a meatloaf. The next man is even more vicious. He used the dummy to attract the simple zombies to him. Then he cursed to the side, holding a jack to keep pressing. Soon the world-famous Leaning Tower of Pisa collapsed. The three unlucky zombies were also crushed into meat cakes. After the end, the man still has a proud face. And the show's protagonist group of four is to play the idea of the White House. They have been outside for 10 years and have become a godlike existence. After easily solving the zombies outside, several people directly into the White House. They made it their home. The once naughty little rock has also grown up. Entering a rebellious period, she often wants to leave the home. As a stepfather, Tallahassee gave her all his love. Not only does he practice basketball skills with her, Christmas gifts are never left behind. Columbus and Wichita were already in a relationship, but when Columbus proposed to her with a pigeon egg-sized diamond, she rejected him mercilessly. Apparently, Wichita is also a girl who is afraid of marriage. The atmosphere instantly became a little awkward, but what the brothers didn't expect was for the sisters to leave a note the next day, and left them again, and took Tallahassee's modified Jeep. This made the two brothers complain to each other. However, just as Columbus was searching the mall, he came across another girl, but Columbus thinks she's a zombie. Two and a half years of hand speed almost killed him. The girl is also very proactive. She came up and gave him a big hug. Columbus who just lost his love did not control himself. Despite Tallahassee's objections, he took Madison back to the White House. The relationship was established that night. This made Tallahassee, who had been single for 50 years, very uncomfortable. Couldn't the director have arranged a woman for him? But just then, there was the sound of someone breaking in from outside. It turns out that the runaway Wichita is back. The two sisters met a long-haired man on the road. Little Rock fell in love with him at first sight. So Wichita was abandoned. But after all, blood is thicker than water. She is now back and wants to take the weapon and go to find Little Rock and apologize to Columbus for leaving without saying goodbye. Just when Wichita thought the two were going to be back together, Madison shows up at the stairway. The relationship between the two is once again awkward. The next morning, the two of them are ready to leave to find Little Rock. But when Tallahassee saw the beat-up van, he got a little emotional. He thinks that a fierce man should drive a pink Jeep. And Madison was a drag, carrying a big bag out of the house. People who didn't know thought she was going on a trip. The three of them were also speechless. Then they drove off in this crappy van, but Tallahassee always wanted a different car. He had his eye on a clown car, but Columbus was afraid of clowns, so they changed to a RV. A few people came to the modified RV, but as soon as Madison opened the door, the RV's alarm went off automatically. The sound instantly attracted the zombies nearby. Tallahassee rushed to the car to turn off the alarm. The three old teammates quickly went into action. Columbus defends the roof of the car. Tallahassee and Wichita focus their fire on killing the walkers. They worked together very well, but the number of zombies was a bit too much. Wichita was changing magazines when a zombie pounced on her. In the nick of time, Madison came to Wichita's rescue with her water gun. They thought the danger was over, but a zombie suddenly emerged from under the car and grabbed Madison's ankle, but Columbus reacted quickly enough. A shot to save Madison. After taking care of all the zombies, the group set off again in the RV. But the next moment, the RV was scrapped. Tallahassee has second thoughts about the clown car. But Columbus, who has a phobia of clowns, won't get in. They had no choice but to ride in the broken van again. But as soon as they got on the road, 
Madison felt something was wrong, had he just been bitten by a zombie? She rushed out of the car and started vomiting, Madison was about to mutate, Columbus can only kill her. Two gunshots later, Columbus got back in the car again, at night they finally found Little Rock's car in front of the Elvis Presley memorial, but there was no one inside. Seeing the piano used by Elvis Presley, Tallahassee couldn't resist playing it, but he was knocked to the ground by Nevada. Nevada was about to pull the trigger, Wichita and Columbus arrived one after another, knowing that they were looking for someone, Nevada also lowered his guard, and told them that Little Rock and the long-haired man had left the place. On the other hand, the long-haired man had taken Little Rock to Babylon, this is a safe zone created by a group of peace-loving people, they refused to use force, all weapons must be handed in to enter, it's a clean slate in a post-apocalyptic world, and Tallahassee and his group were just about to leave for Babylon, they saw their modified car destroyed, Tallahassee was instantly furious, however, when the people in the car got down, several people were stunned, these two people are simply the low version of Columbus and Tallahassee, is their reputation already so big? There are still people cosplaying, the four men were in sympathy with each other, but just when they were chatting happily, after suddenly heard a noise outside, when they got closer, they found that several zombies had climbed onto the Bigfoot. These zombies seemed to be the smart kind, the two imposters did not listen to the advice, had to perform in front of a real doomsday squad, but ended up in a bitter battle, when they returned. They found that they had been bitten. It didn't take long for the mutation to occur. The two imposters are quite powerful after they become zombies. It took them a lot of effort to kill them. Then the group decided to go to Babylon, and Tallahassee seems to have found true love. Nevada gave him a love ring. She said she would wait for him to come back. The car-loving Tallahassee naturally will not let go of the Bigfoot car. But when he got into the car, he realized he couldn't drive the car at all. They had to drive the broken van again, unexpectedly. They ran into the clown car on the road again, only when we got closer did we realize it was Madison, apparently. This chatterbox is not very popular, it turned out that she was not infected with the zombie virus but had an allergic reaction to nuts. Columbus could not bear to kill her, so he just fired two shots into the sky. After a long journey, the group finally arrives in legendary Babylon. Tallahassee had had enough of this shitty van, so he got out of the van and threw a grenade. Knowing that weapons are not allowed in Babylon, Tallahassee is 10,000 reluctant, but in order to meet Little Rock, he finally chose to compromise. She was successfully reunited with Little Rock inside, but except for Tallahassee, they think they should stay. At the end of the night, Tallahassee chose to leave on his own. After all, he was used to living outside. This place would only affect his speed in drawing his gun, but no sooner had he left than he saw a large group of walkers running towards Babylon. The foolish survivors of Babylon had set off fireworks. Tallahassee had no choice but to return again. After all, it was important to save lives. With two and a half years of driving skills, Tallahassee was soon back in Babylon. He told them the seriousness of the situation, but what he didn't expect was that these people had destroyed all the weapons. Tallahassee was helpless in the face of such foolishness. These people are used to a humdrum life. They had no idea how vicious the zombies were. Tallahassee could only teach them how to fight the zombies by hand, and quickly developed a battle plan. They used a fire hose to connect to the oil drums. Then they used toothpicks to pierce the pipe. Wichita lit the fuse. The fireworks on the turntable began to burst. The zombies were attracted to it. The crowd then ignited the gasoline. Then they quickly evacuated the field. The next second, the zombies poured in. The fire surrounded the zombies. The oil drum then exploded. The battle plan was successful, but they underestimated the number of walkers. More zombies came in again. Several people were instantly surrounded by walkers. Without weapons, they were sure to die this time. They simply gave up the fight. In the nick of time, Nevada drove the Bigfoot car and arrived in time. Instantly crushed the crowd of zombies. They got into the big bike, Nevada began to perform in the crowd of zombies. After 10,000 spins, Nevada rushed straight to the gap. She did her ultimate kill shot. In the midst of cheering over and over again, Nevada gradually lost herself. Finally, she managed to turn the Bigfoot car over. As soon as they got out of the car, they were surrounded by walkers. Luckily, 
The people upstairs were able to help in time. Taking advantage of this gap, they entered the building and lured the walkers to the roof. The last step in the plan. There's a wall of people on both sides. Tallahassee isn't a full sprint. He takes a last minute leap. The zombies did not break the car and fell down the tall building. But the last two zombies grabbed Tallahassee's thighs. He was about to be dragged down. Suddenly a gunshot hit the zombie. It was Little Rock who fired the gun. The pistol Tallahassee gave him for Christmas had not been destroyed. Tallahassee escaped death. The crowd worked together to save him. At the end of the movie, Wichita agrees to Columbus' marriage proposal. Tallahassee also finds his true love. They have lived a shy life ever since. This movie is not as good as the first one. Most of the time is boring and unfunny dialogue. But the Battle of Babylon at the end of the film is still interesting. Personal opinion only. Well, subscribe to me. And I'll see you next time.